Hey guys, Dan here with today's quarantine video, and I wasn't quite sure uh, last week what I was going to do for my Monday video today, but the answer came to me over the weekend when I watched both Trolls and Call of the Wild. Uh, I have reviews up for both of those movies and uh, a couple others that I saw recently. That was Saturday's video, but uh, the one thing that really, really struck me about these two films is that they are both rated PG, and... Um, it sort of reignited my anger uh, about the MPAA and the movie ratings system and how it all works and how it is ridiculous. Um, basically, these two movies are both the same rating with no real um, recommendation either way for you know parents or anything. Now, if you look closely on the little tag when it says the rating, like on the trailer or something, it a lot of times will say, you know, rated PG for this, that, and the other thing. Call of the Wild has gun violence, alcohol, uh, dogs in peril, dogs being kicked. Do now, they're CGI dogs, but still. Um, dogs uh, held at gunpoint. Um, <laughs> Trolls is an animated musical movie that has trolls singing rock music as probably its most heinous offense. Like, you know, yeah, there's a villain in it, and yeah, she's, you know, sort of bad, because she's a villain. Every movie has a villain, like, unless it's a documentary or something, like, and even then. Um, but most movies have villains that have any good sort of storytelling. So you will get this. Um, but what is most frustrating to me, and I've been talking for years about how ridiculous the rating system is. Um, Film Fanatics was uh, the weekly podcast I did years ago with uh, my friends Joe and Justin, and frequently I would just rail on the ratings because a lot of it doesn't make sense, especially the kids' movies. Essentially, there are, at this point in time, five ratings. G, which is general admission, everybody's welcome. PG, parental guidance. PG-13, you know, under under 13, maybe be caution if uh, you're a parent, look out for that. R-rated, nobody under 17 admitted without a parent or guardian. And then NC-17, nobody under 17 admitted regardless. If you're an NC-17 movie, you do not get played at any mainstream or corporate theater. Zero, none. And back in the video days, Blockbuster Video would not carry your movie. Hollywood Video would not carry your movie. So NC-17 was essentially a death sentence for your film. Um... But there are only really three ratings in use anymore. PG, PG-13, and R. Maybe one movie a year will get an NC-17 still. Maybe one to two movies a year will get a G. And mostly they're documentaries. Like the Disney Nature documentaries always get rated G. Um, the most recent mainstream film to get a G was Toy Story 4. And that's largely because it gets grandfathered in. Oh, all the Toy Stories are, are G. Okay, well then this one will be G as well. Because the mainstream one before that was Cars 3. Same principle. Um, oh, the other two Cars movies are, are rated G. Really? Because in Cars 2, Mater, who was arguably the most loved character in that series, uh, almost gets crushed to death and murdered. Toy Story 3, the, the beloved characters almost get incinerated within seconds of their lives. Um, but that's all fine. Rated G because it's Disney. Disney owns the world, right? So why is Trolls PG? Well, there's um, the word balls is said in a mid-credits sequence, and not even referring to testicles. Uh, a character returns from the first um, movie as kind of an Easter egg. Uh, voiced by Christopher Mintz Plaza, and uh, he, you know, missed the party or whatever, so he's like, oh, balls. That's it. That's that's the most offensive part in the whole movie. Um, you know, there's maybe a little bit of cartoony violence. The trolls do get put in jail at one point. Okay, fine. But when you go back in time to the 90s, The Lion King, The Hunchback of Notre Dame, these are all G-rated movies. Nobody cared. Now, granted, again, they're Disney Disney's got the clout, you know, make our movies rated G. Um, but anymore, that is is not the, the sense. Anymore, studios, including Disney, want their movies to be PG because they feel like the G rating um, is going to detract from the audience. It will make teens not want to go see your movie because they're going to think it's for babies. And, you know, adults are going to 
kind of roll their eyes and be like, oh man, like I don't want to have to sit through this stupid G-rated movie. And I don't know when that happened. You know, that was this is something that was pointed out to me by uh, my friend Chris, because I posted about this whole issue on my Facebook page, um, and I have so many either movie, movie nerd friends or parents of children um, that all commented in agreement with my synopsis. But not only that, like some of the parents saying like, yeah, we watched Trolls World Tour this weekend with our kids, and like I, I don't understand why it's rated PG either. You know, um, so there's there's been this misconception the last few years that if your movie's rated G, it's essentially a death sentence. Of the last, let's say, five years or so, there's only a, a small handful of G-rated movies um, that aren't Disney nature documentaries that I can even think of. Toy Story Four, Cars Three. I've already mentioned those. Uh, the Peanuts movie was rated G. But there again, oh my god, Lucy pulls the football away and Charlie Brown falls on his head. That's bullying. Shouldn't that be PG then, if, if we're gonna if we're gonna go that route? Um, but that was rated G. The, the first Rio was rated G. I don't know if Rio 2 was rated G, and I don't think I have that movie. Uh, I don't. Okay, so anyway, I, I, I don't know, but maybe it was. Uh, but I know the first one was. But, you know, then we're going back nearly 10 years for the first Rio. But what has happened then is there's no link now between G and PG because G basically doesn't exist. So movies that should be rated G are getting the same rating as Call of the Wild, you know, or Little Women, or Cats, where, you know, in Cats you basically have Rebel Wilson in a cat costume, you know, trying to lick her own vagina. But that's, that's the same rating as Trolls World Tour somehow. Um, so... It really just sparked a fire in my belly uh, that that has not been for a few years. The last one uh, was probably when we were doing Film Fanatics, and I was I was riled up about something or another. But, um, you know, the general rules, I think movie nerds all kind of know these. You know, you can get away with one F word in the PG-13, maybe two if it's, you know, spaced far out enough, and if it... The content, and it can never have to do with sex. You can't, you know, say, I'm going to F you. Um, it has to be like, oh, F, or something like that. Like, The Martian has two. Moneyball has two. There's a couple other examples. Um, but that became a big controversy when the movie Bully came out. Bully was this documentary a few years ago that really was about bullying kids in school, and it should have been accessible to children. Not maybe children, you know, but teenagers for sure. But it was rated R because it said the F word, I think, four times or something like that. Um, so they eventually made enough trims of the scenes, or, or I guess maybe just edited it. I think I saw the original version um, when I ended up seeing it. But, you know, there's a great example of, like, what is going on in this industry that, that the people who most need to see this movie can't because they dropped four F-bombs. I got news for you. Your children are all over the Internet watching porn every day and, you know, saying watching shows on Netflix that say F and have nudity and have sex. You know, uh, if, if this if Bully came out now, it would have went straight to Netflix. The producers would have said, "All right, well, forget the MPA. Then you guys suck. We're gonna just release this on demand somewhere, release it on Netflix, Hulu, Amazon, anything." Um, and so that's sort of where we are now, which I think is a good place because that gives the it gives the power back to the makers of these films. So um, one of the things that several people commented on um, on my Facebook post was that, hey, have you seen the documentary, this movie, or this film is not yet rated? Uh, and I, I had, but it's been a long time. It was about 12 years ago. It came out in 2006. I saw it probably in 2008 or something, uh, and I loved it. It was very eye-opening, but it is hard to find. It is. It has been virtually you know, wiped off the face of the planet. Netflix doesn't have it. It used to. Uh, years ago, Netflix did have it. Now it does not. Amazon Prime doesn't have it. You can't even rent it on Amazon Prime to download. I was willing to pay for it and download it that way. Um, also, uh, it's it's on DVD for sale on Amazon, but it's like 40 bucks because it's out of print. Um, so I was able to find a version of it online. It was split into two parts, uh, and I'm actually going to put those links um, in the description of this video so if you guys want to check it out and have not seen it you're able to um, because it is it's 
really a jarring film. It's so riveting. Um, it's this documentary that Kirby Dick did about the industry and about specifically the, the ratings in the MPAA and how um, they are so secretive and so bizarre and how you don't know who is even rating your movies. And they have all these rules in place that they say they adhere to, but they really don't. Like, they say that, oh, these are all people who are parents um, of, of people, you know, from the ages of 12 to 17. And these are everyday parents that are rating the movies. And then, you know, Kirby Dick and his crew hired a private investigator to literally find out who these people are all are. So they, like, stalked the MPA offices and everything. And all the people, uh, except for one that they couldn't really track down, um, are talked about in the movie and profiled and it says you know well here's how many kids they have and here's what their ages are and a lot of them have been in the system so long their kids have aged out because another thing the mpaa claims is that people only have movie rating jobs for three to seven years well here one guy has been in for nine years and there's a couple you know senior raters that have been there for even longer so it's it's this great expose about who these people are and what the MPAA is is what their deal is and what they're trying to hide and all of this. Um, but more interesting to me than the private eye stuff of the film was talking to the different directors that have gone through this. They, at the beginning of the movie, list, you know, a couple dozen directors that many of them have very, very well-known names. Quentin Tarantino, Wes Craven, Kevin Smith, uh, John Waters, that have had their films rated NC-17. And then many of them were talked to. John Waters was talked to about uh, A Dirty Shame. Uh, Trey Parker was, or was it Matt Stone? I think Matt Stone was the one that was talked to. Um, yeah, it was. It was Matt Stone was talked to about um, both Orgasmo and Team America World Police. And actually a little bit about South Park, uh, Bigger, Longer, and Uncut, too. Um, the uh, director of The Cooler... Uh, as well as one of the stars, Maria Bello, were talked to uh, about that movie in, in an interview. Uh, the director of Boys Don't Cry. So, you know, it was, it was really interesting and eye-opening to hear their first-person accounts of what happens in the industry uh, and when, you know, when they get slapped with an NC-17, what is the procedure? What's the next step? Um, and so if you're an independent movie, um, you don't get notes on what to cut. You just, you're given the rating and said, well, you can make cuts if you want to to get it down to an R. Have fun figuring out what that is. But if you're through a studio, then they will tell you specific things you have to cut uh, to get that R rating. So there, there's your, you know, your uh, in-the-pocket system. Um, and, and the best example of that was Matt Stone because he was like, well, when we did Orgasmo, it was self-financed, you know, this and that and the other thing. And they just didn't tell us anything to cut. They just said, it's NC-17, goodbye. And uh, they ended up keeping the NC-17 rating for that movie. They didn't cut it. Um, but then South Park, which was through Paramount, they got a list of, of specific things to cut. Um, and so that, of course, blew his mind. Um, and then uh, the, the John Waters thing was interesting, too, because he's like, well, um, you know, I go to the movies with people all the time, and, and you know... I, I have some real perverted friends, and none of them have done the things that I talk about in this movie. This movie is a comedy. It's, you know, a fiction, um, and that kind of thing. But, you know, I guess they didn't want them getting ideas and stuff. Um, but then once you become an NC-17 film, you can also go to an appeals board. And the appeals board is other people completely that are not the original Raiders, um, and they're also anonymous. What's, what's really cool that Kirby Dick did was, once the movie was about two-thirds complete, he sent it in for an actual rating, just to see what the process was and everything, and uh, how they would, they would feel about it. So they called him back and was like, well, it's NC-17, da 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 da, -da. we're not going to tell you what you need to cut. Um, and then this is all in the movie. This is all like the last third of the movie, or 20 minutes maybe of the movie, is him dealing with his own movie, you know, that we're currently watching with the proceedings. And so it goes through this whole thing and uh, you, you learn that there's like two members of the clergy on hand, even though they don't get a vote, or maybe they do. One person that spoke anonymously uh, that is a person uh, at the appeals, he did say like, oh yes, you know, the, the clergy people do vote as well, um, which I think is very weird because I personally, you know, I mean, I, I believe in God. I consider myself a Christian, but I, F organized religion. Like, I'm not into that at all. So the fact that a Catholic priest is sitting there determining 
what types of movies are good for me and my family. It's like, that's just nonsense to me. Um, but uh, even, even more odd, I think, is that with the appeals process, a director cannot say, oh, well, this movie had this scene in it, or th they did this in this movie, and how is that any different than my movie? You are not allowed to bring up any precedents, any old movies, any ratings, any current movies that was just rated two months ago you can't bring up. Um, and so the people that they spoke to about that, John Waters being one of them, was just like, I don't understand <laughs> you know, like how we're supposed to appeal something if we can't bring up anything else that exists. Like, the work already is the work, and it stands for itself. <laughs> like, so, so I thought that was very weird. So it is this shady as hell process. And uh, one of the things they point out is, you know, the only other organization really in America where you don't know the names or, or anything of anybody involved is like the CIA. Um, you know, here you have eight to ten people that watch movies and rate them and no one is allowed to know who they are, you know, what their name is, where they live, anything. Also, two of the people live right next to each other, this movie exposed. Um, so it's, uh, you know, it's an interesting system uh, that sucks. It, it's broken. It's a broken system. Uh, I, I shouldn't even say it's an interesting system because it's not. It's a broken system. Um, and, you know, the Boys Don't Cry director... Um, or may, wait, maybe it was a different movie. It might have been the But I'm a Cheerleader director. Anyway, one, one of the directors that is a lesbian, um, you know, was talking about, well, you know, when you give my movie to this ratings board and say, oh, these are all, you know, typical American families, you know, typical American parents and stuff. Well, I'm a typical American parent. You know, I have two kids, you know, between these ages and whatever. And why, why am I not represented? You know, are there any gay members on the board? And uh, they did speak to two former movie raiders, and both of them were like, "No, like that, there was, you know, there was nobody that was uh, out, certainly as as a gay person or anything." And so, this movie also dives into another issue I have, uh, which is that sex is rated way more harshly than violence. Now, when I was growing up in my household, it was the opposite. We were not allowed to see violent movies, especially rated R violent movies. If we saw a rated R movie, it was because it was a comedy. Coming to America, classic. Police Academy, classic in my house. Um, you know, but something like Die Hard, I didn't see Die Hard until I was in my 30s. You know? Uh, I mean, I could have, but when, I was, when, when it came out when I was 10, I wasn't allowed to watch it. And so I just never really did, you know? Horror movies, not allowed to watch. Anything with sex, though, as long as it was, you know, loving and, and stuff, as long as it wasn't, like, gratuitous, my parents were fine with that. Nudity, fine. You know, as long as it wasn't super, you know, there's some nudity in Police Academy that's pretty gratuitous. But, it, you know, it was whatever. It was like frat boy nudity kind of thing. Um, and, you know, anything that, you know, they, they talk in this movie about like, oh, the, the number of thrusts can determine. Or if it's in a, is in a position other than missionary you know, it gets a, a, a harsher rating. If it's gay sex, it gets a way harsher rating. Now, this movie was made in 2006, so obviously a lot of things have changed. Um, certainly, I think, in the manner of, um, of gay and lesbian scenes, but not all the time. You know, Blue is the Warmest Color was rated NC-17, um, and th that was a movie about lesbians, and there were some gratuitous... I shouldn't say gratuitous, because they were sort of plot-focused, but... Um, you know, about the, the two leads falling in love and, and being together, and they were being intimate, you know? Um, and that got an NC-17. Fifty Shades of Grey gets an R. And why? Because half the people on the panel probably read the books and diddled themselves to it, you know? Um, so, Kevin Smith, one of the things he talks about is Jersey Girl. They wanted to give Jersey Girl an R rating because Liv Tyler's character talked about uh, masturbation at the diner with uh, Ben Affleck. And Kevin Smith flat out said, I guess during the appeals, uh, or maybe just in a conversation with the, the woman um, that's sort of in charge now, Joan Graves, um, or at least was, you know, 15 years ago when this movie was made, he was like, if you don't think your daughter is, you know, already masturbating and already doing all this stuff that they talk about in this movie, you're out of your mind, you know? Um, so that was interesting. Um, so to me, the NC-17 and the G either should no longer exist 
or there should be more clear-cut things that parents can look at. Like, um, one of the things in this movie is that uh, Jack Valenti, I think he's dead now, but he retired shortly before this movie came out. He was the head of the MPAA for 30-plus years. It was kind of his his baby. He was, like, the first president of it, um, and he kept the position for 30 years. He was one of Lyndon Johnson's aides or something. Um, but he is shown here in, you know, some stock footage interview, but one of the things he says is, oh, well, you know, 78% of parents uh, agree that the rating system, you know, has been helpful for them. And I forget which director it is, but he was just like, well, yeah, they're the only game in town. So is it a better system than no system? Sure. You know, it probably is. Um, but my issue is, like, there have been some PG movies in the last few years that I think, if we're going to hold them to the same standard as, like, Frozen or Tangled or, um, you know, Paddington Bear, that there needs to be more differentiation. Because, like, the house with the clock in its walls, I thought was very scary. For a PG-13 movie, I mean, for a PG movie, I, dude, I would have never taken my eight-year-old nephew to that movie. It would have scared the crap out of him. But guess what? It's got the same rating as The Grinch, the animated one that just came out. It's got the same rating as Smallfoot. All of these movies should be G. And I'm not saying every animated movie should be G. I think Spies in Disguise, okay, that could be PG. There's a lot of violence in that. The Incredibles movies, yep, PG, absolutely. Uh, you know, How to Train Your Dragon, probably PG is good for that. Um, but most of the movies are not like that. You know, like, the, the fact that Trolls and Call of the Wild have the same rating just is infuriating. Um... You know, back when I was a kid, when PG-13 was just getting started, uh, which happened in 1984, they didn't really know what to do with it. So with PG movies, still, you could you could get away with some swearing, like Beetlejuice is PG, and that says the F word, and that came out four years after PG-13 was created. So, you know, the late 80s, early 90s was still this sort of gray area. And then uh, the 90s, it was pretty much like any animated movie was G. Any live-action movie was PG. Um, and then... And, and up, you know, PG, PG-13, or R. Um, but the whole, like, violence versus sex thing for older movies makes me super angry because, uh, you know, I think there's a huge problem in this country with violence. That's another topic I don't need to get into. Um, and I also think there's a problem with being too repressed about sex. And when you look at the UK rating system, and they mention this in the, in the movie as well, um, that is the opposite. The violent movies are judged way more harshly, and the sex movies are, you know, graded a little lighter, especially if it's loving sex and they're not, you know, being too gratuitous or not being too too dirty. Um, <coughs> excuse me. It's seen as, you know, just an act of love or whatever. Um, so, you know, personally, I, I think we can adopt that system more. I think seeing, you know, some of the Taken movies be PG-13 and all these super, super gun-heavy violent movies. And um, the the movie, this film is not yet rated, gives a lot of great examples of that. You know, the rundown, the one Die Hard movie uh, that they decided to make PG-13. It still had the same amount of violence as a normal Die Hard movie. He just didn't say yippee ki mother effers in it. <laughs> that's literally the only difference from what I could tell. Um, you know, and that's another thing. I, language, dude, is so stupid to rate that harshly, especially in this day and age of YouTube, Netflix, you know, all of that stuff. You don't think your your 10-year-old kid is watching things that say the F word? You're out of your freaking mind, you know? Um, so it is, it is this entity that is archaic and unnecessary, it's it's necessary to have some sort of ratings. I don't deny that. But A, make them consistent, and B, actually use the ratings you have. You know, just because there's a fart joke in a Shrek movie, and you're like, oh, my kids can't can't be uh, here and that. Like, the, the first Frozen, I'm sorry, but there is nothing offensive in that movie that you wouldn't have seen in 20 other Disney movies from the 70s, 80s, and 90s that are all rated G. You know, and I'm not going to go back as far and say, you know, well, Bambi, you know, whatever. Okay, that's that's under a different time and a different system. The MPAA didn't exist back then. But, you know, when you're talking about movies now, it's like I could list off so many. Like Wonder Wonder Park, 
uh, from last year. Abominable. I already said Smallfoot. Uh, both the Paddington movies. You know, all of these should be G-rated features. Because really, other than maybe a coarse joke here or there that, by the way, go right over kids' heads. You know, and, and and they've been sneaking in those kind of jokes and stuff. You think Aladdin didn't have any risque humor with Robin Williams doing his, his genie bit? Like, of course it did. But it went over kids' heads, you know? So it's still got a G. I, I just, I don't, and Toy Story 4? There's risque jokes in that. Also, the, uh, the creepy, you know, dummies, the ventriloquist dummies, those were scary. It was scarier than anything that was in Wonder Park. Or uh, trolls, honestly. Uh, so I, I think it's an archaic system, um, and I just wanted to rant about it. That's all. It wasn't my intention to be this big long video, but when I mentioned the the trolls versus Call of the Wild thing on my Facebook page, it got a lot of people talking, um, both on the side of like f the movie industry and the MPAA, and hey, I'm a parent. I don't get why this is PG either. Um, so it was clearly a good discussion point for a lot of people. So I just thought I would throw it up as, uh, my quarantine video for the day because I think it is ridiculous. And I think everybody should watch this movie. This film has not yet been rated or something like that. This film is not yet rated. Um, and like I said, it is very hard to find, but I'm going to put the links, um, to how I found it, uh, in the description here because I urge everybody out there to watch it if you never have seen it. It will fire you up about this this industry and um, the fact that that it's they're so in the studio's pockets and it really it, it it penalizes the independent filmmaker far more than anything else you know and again I, I in this day and age it's a little different because of Netflix and stuff and Amazon Prime and, and things you can just rent or see for free on your streaming services um, you know, there are no blockbuster videos anymore, I, mean, I guess, except the one in uh, Oregon, I think it is, or something, or Alaska. Um, you know, so there, there's nobody to, to stop you, you know, from renting it or seeing it or whatever. But an NC-17 movie still isn't going to be put into theaters, you know. They, they say, oh, this is a voluntary system. You don't have to get your movie rated. Right, but if you do, Regal won't play it. AMC won't play it. Cinemark won't play it. Alamo Drafthouse won't play it, you know? Any any major chain is going to play it. Now, we have a... Uh, uh, I live in Harrisburg, and we have an independent theater here called the Midtown, and they have run some NC-17 movies. I've seen a few there. Um, Killer Joe, starring Matthew McConaughey, is one of them. Um, but for DVD, they trimmed it and made it an R-rated DVD, so Walmart would carry it. Um, you know, it, it is really stifling to the... Uh, the directors and the producers of these films and the, and the screenwriters and all of that. Um, so it's it's really two rants in one because I think the whole GPG thing is nonsense and I think the NC-17 and R thing is nonsense, which fired me up even more after I rewatched the documentary. Um, PG-13 is pretty fine as it is. I think you can get away with a few more F-bombs and I do think that violence should maybe be toned down. But for the most part, most movies that are rated PG-13, I'm like, okay, that's fine. Some of the some of the horror movies and some of the violent movies I think should be R and aren't, but whatever. Your thirteen year olds are seeing all that crap anyway. I mean, they kill people in Fortnite every day, you know, on the video game. So it's like, and ten years ago it was Grand Theft Auto. So I guess whatever, really. But um, I think it's an archaic system, and I think it, it doesn't benefit anybody really, except the movie studios. Um, because I, I don't think it benefits parents when you have trolls the same rating as Call of the Wild. It just doesn't make sense. Um, but thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe below uh, if you haven't yet. I am at 400-plus subscribers now, which is awesome. Um, and I'm doing these videos every day. So if you like what you heard today, check out some of my other videos. Check out some of my movie reviews if you want. Um, but definitely check out, either way, check out this documentary um, about the, the film industry. I think it will be shocking and eye-opening for you. I would love for them to do a new version of it, uh, taking into account a lot of the, the stuff now, like Netflix and, and stuff, um, because I, I would be very interested to see how how they feel that it's changed. Like if Kirby Dick is uh, still with us and wants to do another one, I think that would be really, really cool. But anyway, thank you so much for watching, and uh, be safe out there. Bye.